how to select a control valve hello everyone thank you all for subscribing like sharing and support of this channel in this video I'm going to show you how to select the right control valve for your application through simple steps which will be clearer with actual example of project but before we begin let's have some basic information everyone should know as some rules the control valve plays a considerable role in establishing and maintaining an efficient process when selecting among the available options you have to be sure to evaluate how control valves features match the applications fluid requirements in terms of versatility stable flow control ability to handle a range of flow and connectivity for remote monitoring control valves alter fluid flow by varying the size of the flow passage as directed by a signal from controller this enables the direct control of flow rate and the consequential control of key process parameters including pressure temperature and liquid level several major types of control valves are available each of which can come in numerous designs configuration and sizes each has pros and cons and may be most appropriate for different applications finding the valve that works best for specific application is a challenge that can make it difficult to choose which one is right for a given fluid system but knowing what parameters are important can help facilitate the selection process key consideration regarding technical specification include the level of control offered resolution achieved and the valve's delivery time maintenance and longevity should also be considered several factors come and into play during selection including the need of application specific knowledge and expertise economic restrictions plant outage schedules and maintenance plans over the life of the valve control valve selection considerations some of the key control valve selection considerations include fluid type pressure rating temperature rating flow rate a CV flow coefficient, installation requirement, design, industry and country uh, standards. A control valve is the single most important element in any fluid handling system. Selecting the proper valve will have a great effect on the efficiency of system. There are volumes of information on the science of valve sizing and fluid mechanics to properly size control valve uh, theoretically a design engineer would take into consideration the entire system pumps piping geometry factors Reynolds numbers correction factors specific heat factors velocity of approach pr uh, pressure recovery ATC in the real world of valve sizing we just don't have all of that information available valve sizing in the real world is not an exact science but an art valve sizing and selection there are a couple of engineering design questions that need to be answered in order to help maintain design intent of the system in this section we will provide 18 steps on how to properly size and select valves actuators and assemblies now let's have 18 steps on how to properly size and select valves actuators and assemblies step number one uh, determine valve type step number two determine medium step Step number three, determine flow rate of equipment to be controlled. Step number four, determine specified pressure drop. Step number five, calculate CV from this formula. CV equal to Q multiplied by the square, square root S divided to delta P, uh, which the formulas we can find here for uh, any medium 
say v equal to q multiply by square root of s divided to delta p if we are working in water cv will be q divided to square root uh, delta p where s is the specific gravi gravity of media cv is the flow coefficient q is the volumetric uh, flow gpm with valve fully open delta p is differential pressure psi with valve fully open we can also calculate the gpm for uh, considering the medium is water which is gpm equal to q divided 500 to uh, multiply by delta t if we have another uh, material glycol for example gpm will be calculated q square root uh, of s uh, divided to 500 uh, delta T CP we have also the uh, valve authority which is uh, the valve authority is generally defined as the ratio of the pressure drop across the fully open valve compared to the pressure drop across the entire circuit including the valve that means uh, we can little bit explain we have uh, this is the circuit delta p the authority the valve authority is delta p across the uh, valve divided to delta p across the circuit including the valve that mean uh, percent authority equal delta p value for the valve divided to delta p total controlled branch so the information needed for calculation is delta p total controlled uh, branch and delta p valve we have also selecting control valve with percent authority between 25 percent to 50 percent which is the desired value for any selected valve we have consideration for valve sizing guidelines we can consider the delta p for valve uh, is 5 psi if the differential pressure if the system differential pressure is less than 20 if the system differential pressure is less than 45 and greater than 20 psi then we can use the 25 percent of system differential pressure rule and if the system differential pressure is greater than 45 we can use 15 psi next step we have to to determine number of ports two-way or three-way valve next we have to determine required NC pressure class rating 125 or 250 next we have to determine required flow characteristic typically equal percentage for water applications and linear for steam applications next we have to determine trim requirement either it is a bronze brass usually for low delta p applications or stainless steel usually for higher delta p applications next we have to determine the type of packing if applicable standard or high temperature next step number 11 we have to determine type of mechanical connection to the piping system NPT FXF or NPT FXUM flanged sweet ETC next we have to uh, for the actuator determine normal position and fail safe requirement NO normally open NC normally close NR spring retain or fail safe NSR non spring retain or fail in place next step number 13 we have to determine the type of actuator and control signal to position floating 0 to 10 vdc atc 
Next step, we have to, to determine if annual override is required. Next step, number 15, based on all of these inputs, we have to select an orderable valve assembly. Step number 16, we have to check close of pressure specified or at least system differential pressure. Step number 17, we have to calculate actual pressure drop based on valve selected using CV formula. And last step, we have to check for percent authority, where percent authority should be between 25 and 50. Now, let's have an example for select a valve to control a chilled water coil that must have a flow of 35 GPM with a valve differential pressure delta P of 5 PSI. So let's go step by step according to what we have studied. First we have to know the valve type. In this case our valve type is two-way valve. Second we have to know the medium. The medium is water here. We have to determine the flow rate. We know the flow rate now is 35. We have the specified pressure drop. We know it. It's already given. Next we have to calculate the CV. So let's calculate the CV. CV equal to Q square root S divided to delta P. If we substitute the values 35 multiplied by a square root of 1 because it is water divided to 5 psi then we can get CV value is 15.6 and we know from the specification of the valve that it is two-way normally open equal percentage valve and it is a bronze trim standard packing as we have selected then according to CV value 16 we can find uh, uh, the valve for the 8 inch standard uh, temperature actuator, pneum pneumatic actuator, we can find the actuator code 277-03168. So this is the full description of what we have selected according to the steps we discussed. Now let's have another example for selection of the valve. We have an example to select a two-way normally open valve and pneumatic actuator assembly that will deliver 20 GPM chilled water with linear flow characteristic with no more than 5 PSI pressure drop across the fully open valve and the valve must have standard packing and a female to female connection. So for doing this selection, these are the specification of what we need to select the valve, what we need to select. So first step, we know the specification. Next we have to go for the valve sizing steps. We can go to this chart here first step we can take the flow GPM the flow GPM and for the for the FCU and the valve Delta P the Delta P through the valve drop it here and the third step will be getting the CV value actually this extracted from the formula as well if we apply the formula we will get CV value equal to 8.9 the nearest higher value is 10 so CV is 10 so we will select one inch valve next we can go to the actuator selection so according to that we can locate the graph for pneumatic actuator for normally open valves in the lower right side of the figure we can locate the one inch valves the gray shaded bar represent an eight inch pneumatic actuator well in this case the eight inch pneumatic actuator has the sufficient force to provide tight close 
of against more than 50 psi differential pressure next we will select the product number for the valve we have selected so we will use table number one in this catalog two-way normally open equal percentage valve bronze trim standard packaging uh, for, so we have to select the standard packed valve with an female to female connection according to the specification and we will select the one inch line size determined from the size example uh, the valve part number will be 599-03167 we will read across the table to the 8 inch standard pneumatic actuator the actuator part number is 599-01050 and the actuator code number is 277 then we will read down the column to determine the valve and actuator assembly product number is 277-03167 with that example, we reach to the end of our video today. Uh, I wish that if anybody has a comment, don't hesitate to write it in the comment part uh, below this video. I wish you a good day. Thank you for watching. Bye.